just like that nam oil is set up on top there a little bit. Um, and that might also be in conjunction a bit with the diatometrous earth. And uh, you, you can see the, I showed you the nam oil that I was using. That's not the only one I have used. It's a good one. 100% um, pure nam oil is what you start with. Uh, my hemp oil uh, that I'm using, I a uh, coconut oil, uh, uh, hemp oil, and peppermint and Oregon mint, uh, main things, uh, and uh, phosphorus, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, basically. And that's what you have, and and more. But you know, I'm going to smoke some pot now, and so this is all that I can do. And why uh, use that? There's stuff that is really good on the market that'll kill uh, all of this stuff um, with chemicals. It's a, it's a it's a person's personal uh, preference what they do. I'd rather make my own uh, out of stuff that I can eat, yep, and that's not bad, and that I can put on, get on my hands and uh, uh, on my body, and not have to worry about being burnt or uh, or any of that stuff. Not hurting the river, not hurting uh, the environment, uh, which is which is part of. Uh, part of who I am anyway. Um, this spider mite oil that I'm making uh, should work real well on the uh, white flies too. And like I, I, I seen the, uh, there is, it looked like a moth. It was just really small moth. Um, but like uh, the expert said, uh, she said that it most likely is a white fly. Well, if that's right, uh, then uh, that's a whole different type of a, of a situation, and I think that this should take care of it. Um, I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that there is uh, no gnats down on the bottom uh, in uh, underneath the sand and the diatomaceous earth uh, working on my roots down there because that would also slow down the plants. We'll see in the next few days uh, if they uh, perk back up and start uh, and you can see they're not bad uh, but uh, the question is is something happening in there that is detrimental to the plants and these things that are detrimental are so small. They're small. I can't see them. I can't see them. Uh, I have gotten, let me show you this neat thing I got. It was, um, I got this, this I got, and I wish I had not. Um, this is from, this is a lit fancy dancy lit microscope type of thing and I don't seem to be able to use it very well. Uh, it works and it lights up and it's really you can't and you can uh, adjust it it has a little light thing here and so you can light it up and it's it's fancy dancy. And, uh, but here, let me show you what I have ended up using that works for me. And it doesn't hardly cost anything. Okay, here you go. This is, uh, and you just stick this in your eye. This is a little bit dirty. Uh, but you wash, wipe it off. Uh, 
and you know, I guess you wipe it off on the inside too. But anyway, this works. And you stick it in your eye, and you don't have to have eye. Uh, and I think this costs a dollar and a half. I think I had to get three of them or something off of Amazon all at once, but I like about a dollar and a half each. And they work. They work. Uh, much better than your eyes when you're looking at uh, the smallness that is, that is inherent into the types of things uh, like spider mites and white flies and whatever else uh, is out there. Um, uh, very small and they have different stages of life. Um, and, and by the time you can see them, it's, you're pretty much down the river in the wrong direction. So, and then from there on in, you're working on ketchup. You know, catching up. Uh, do it. It's better to um, anticipate. And here where I am, uh, I get 100% of all the time. Uh, you know, and whether it's my animals bringing uh, the stuff in, uh, whether it's uh, the uh, indigenous uh, spider mite uh, colonies that are in the alder trees and the uh, willow trees, um, the, the trash trees, you know, uh, whatever, or whether they're coming in uh, uh, from my exhaust fan there, uh, whatever the deal is, 100% uh, of the time here. And so that's, uh, my plants will be destroyed by spider mites um, and other critters. Now the white flies, I, uh, you know, um, if that's what I saw and I didn't catch one, I only did see one. Anyway, ha, cheers. This is, uh, this is what happened today. Uh, better safe than sorry. Uh, better thorough than not thorough. Uh, so why do I put so much of it on my plants? Well, it's all natural. Uh, the excess goes into the soil underneath in there. And uh, any uh, larvae or uh, anything that's underneath the soil there is going to get a dose of it. And the, nothing like that. I mean, nothing. Nothing. Oh, yeah. First hit of the day, and thank you guys for coming uh, to the grow closet here. Um, and you might think I'm paranoid on bugs. You bet I am. You bet I am. And uh, yeah, yeah, you give them an inch, they take your whole crop. They'll take it. And uh, then our uh, yeah, take it. And that's the only thing. Either I get the crop, or they get the crop. They being the bugs and the spider mites. The spider mites. I haven't seen any spider mites this time. Uh, they always come. They're always here. Uh, and I know that. And that gives me the benefit of the... Uh, that gives me a edge because I know 100% that my plants are going to uh, be infected by them if I uh, leave the plants uh, just just to grow. Now outside, uh, there is there's critters outside that eats the spider mites and that eats the uh, white flies or anything that gets onto the marijuana, and those are those poisonous spiders. 
and no, nobody messes with the poisonous spiders, not even me, because um, they bite. And uh, they keep the plant, uh, they keep everything off the plant, they kill everything, uh, including a bee or anything that comes on. Uh, so that is, uh, that's the downside of that, but this is the location that I'm in here, a very harsh location outside, uh, so for outside critters, uh, they become very avid, you know, uh, very, anyway, um, so, aha! This smoke here is the vortex that I grew, and you can uh, go back and look at the vortex videos. Um, I love the vortex. It, uh, it's an active high, and it's a good high. It's an up high. You know, it's a don't put you to sleep. And uh, vortex. I'd like to get another uh, vortex plant going. They're a little bit uh, more like the cotton candy, you know. Although the cotton candy is more robust than the uh, vortex was at this stage of the game. Um, actually, it's a pretty robust plant, just not not growing like this uh, chocolope. This chocolope is <laughs> wow. Um, second topping, blam blam, just like that. Within a month. And yeah, uh, and that's what I was figuring. I was figuring that some of these leaves, uh, I got another leaf down there that, yeah, yeah. Um, and here's uh, an old root. I didn't clean the sand out uh, before I put the sand down, you know, the river sand. Uh, don't put any uh, ocean sand on it. You don't want any salt down there. Uh, but. I really hope that, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have to hope. That's the whole thing. Now, last night, I was, uh, and one of the things that is sort of cool about spider mites, or uncool, is they attack on the top. Uh, and if you take uh, rubbing alcohol, just the 70%, uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol type thing, isopropyl, um, and spray on the tops, just on the very, very tops of the, uh, uh, that retards the, um, well, actually kills uh, the little spider mites around there and gives you about a day, uh, and it starts growing again a bit, and then, you know, the spider mites come back in force and, uh, but that gives you an idea, and I didn't see a spurt in uh, uh, growth overnight. So I don't think that's the spider mites at all. Um, I don't think that was an issue here. I it, it could have been uh, white flies, and you know, usually here in Oregon, like I say, the white flies are eaten by everything that is, or at least this portion of Oregon, of everything that is out there, they eat, uh, like to eat a white fly. And they also like to eat mites, spider mites. So, outside plants, and then you have just only a very few months outside uh, that you can grow, period. And this year was hit by that uh, weaponized hailstorm that took out all my plants. That was unfortunate. Oh, nice. And this stuff really gets you, fuck, uh, gets you loaded. Yeah, gets you loaded. So, that's a... Uh, Celebrate being loaded and turn back on the lights.
Let's take a look at the lights. This is so much fun. <laughs> So, thank you for uh, coming to visit the grill closet. And this was fun. And the question is, how will everything turn out? And the answer to that is we don't know. Uh, you never do know. You, you hope for the best. And it's always fun. It's always fun. So look at this. Uh, we've got a vacuum cleaner, but we're not looking at that. Eh. It's moving along. Yeah, it is. I've got a uh, kitty hair all over it. Got a rock in my hand that I just picked up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, kitty hair and Ah, oh, that might have been dog hair. So, whatever it is, we can burn it. That'd be nice. And that becomes a benefit. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Oh, there's some marijuana leaves that haven't burnt. Yeah, look at that. There were two, ah, that'll burn it. There's some more leaves down there. 
Yeah, same, same to think that the fire would be hot enough to, yeah, it's hot enough to keep, uh, yeah. What a blessing, a good fireplace and nice dry wood. Love from Oregon, no more war. War is pretty stupid.